in the Appalachian Mountains, right next to where the blob is at, where more heat is beneath the ground. What is happening there right now? When I stopped the vibration, it actually took about 20 seconds. It felt through the pipes as if though there was a dozer or something driving by, and there is none of that. I'm, I'm here by myself. The Earth has a, has a frequency, and the frequency goes off. Uh, like I said, it's affecting birds, it's affecting bees, it's affecting all kinds of wildlife out there. My research is in my reports because I know what these hot blobs are, I know what magma is, I know what humming, you know. And unfortunately, uh, the public doesn't know. My survival is not important in this, in this uh, uh, realm. My, my thing is uh, to save as many as I can. A new study reveals a giant blob of hot rock located beneath New Hampshire. Former professor Fred Zillenbach from Union College, New York, has a neurological illness. And everything he's saying right now is his words that he knows could be his last mission. And he takes this seriously. So you need to listen closely to what he has to say next. What? Did you hear specifically on the East Coast, supposedly this hot blob coming over there with magma increasing? To that hot blob, I mean, uh, the, uh, the mainstream media said uh, nothing to worry about. You know, it, it's not going to be uh, a problem for the next uh, million years. So the blob, that's what it appears is happening under the Appalachians. It's it's trying to get out, basically. Okay, um, well, and in fact, um, I'm not sure it we has want it to. Out. The blob has actually erupted volcanoes, but that was like 80 million years ago. So we don't have to worry about it erupting any new volcanoes anytime soon. Okay, Doug, you've given us something yeah. more to worry about. Uh, but the article keeps on coming over and over and over again. Okay, why are you telling me this if, it, if it's not going to be a problem for a million years? I'm not going to be here in a million years. <laughs> for why are you telling me this now? I'm saying, like, it doesn't make sense. Like, it's like, oh, I'm telling you, but don't worry, you'll be dead. You're preparing me for something, okay? I know what's coming because... All these things, what they are doing is what they call soft disclosures. That's what they are. They're preparing the public for these things. You know, they're, they're seeing how the public is going to react. And everybody tuning in, whether you're new or not, I read your comments. You said booms was happening all across New Jersey, North Carolina, all the way up. But soft disclosure, Professor. Everybody tuning in right now, and whether they're across the world, want to know what you know that the public doesn't know. But this will help keep them aware and alert so that they can see the signs of what's to come before it happens. And they'd like to say, all right, it's time to exit now. It's time to move back a little further now. It's time to get serious about this. What else happens on the East Coast that shows this significant movement of this hot blob magma? Well, you, you're going to see, what you're going to see with that, you're going to see more earthquake activity. You're going to see more earthquake activity in the United States. That, that you're going to see. Just days ago, Maryland was hit with a rare earthquake showing strange seismic activity. But what makes it more unusual, just hours before that, the Atlantic Ocean was struck by earthquakes. And now, Professor Zillenbach reveals... If the hot blob starts moving massively, you will see this happen. You're going to see more earthquake activity uh, above a 6.0. That will happen. Um, for me, it's, it's based upon events. And it's my thing is when the biblical event and what I mean by a biblical event a biblical event meaning a super volcano erupting uh, such as uh, the one in Italy uh, well, I didn't show y'all something about or, that or uh, New Madrid or New Madrid fault or uh, uh, or uh, Yellowstone erupting uh, 
something to that nature where a uh, great loss of life would happen and uh, damage in trillions. That would be an example of a biblical event. Well, Italy's super volcano you just talked about is actually showing signs it could be getting ready to erupt. It's videos coming out of all the haze and then the ground is boiling over there apparently. Uh, thousands are in danger. We gotta watch this closely. That's why now. you should just stop and hit subscribe right now because you need to know exactly what's gonna be happening. We'll give you the warning signs, survival alerts before these things happen so you can know what's going on. Let's get back to it. So that's when you believe on the East Coast that the magma shift would get more significant because that that big eruption would be feeding exactly different systems across the United States. Oh yes, I, I do believe that after that, you're going to reach uh, uh, part two. We're in what I would call, in the report I did 30 years ago, uh, we have reached uh, what I call in the pole shift uh, timeline. Uh, uh, we have reached the domino effect phase where everything in the media is so overwhelming, you can't even keep up with current events. You can't keep up. I can't keep up. The average person can't keep up with it. We're all re Everybody is so overwhelmed. Nobody even wants to turn on the news anymore because it's nothing but disasters after disasters. And that's the domino effect phase. The next yeah. phase, well, the domino effect phase too, when you're talking about biblical effects and you're talking about biblical effects going back to back. And this is when people start panicking. Okay, so if that's when the packing begins, when you start to see those events happen. Those oh, events oh happen. yeah, this is when internet shuts down. This is when uh, this is when uh, everybody uh, starts figuring out uh, what the deal is. All right, so to engage with the audience and the people here, if you could say there was better places to be, and we get it, a lot of shifts is happening everywhere. What were the best places during these situations to be uh, currently, whether you're in America or whether you're in uh, Europe? What what zones? Obviously, everybody knows that coastlines is not safe. No, here. coastlines. Forget it. You don't want to be anywhere in the coastline. I'm in New Jersey and forget it. I don't, uh, uh, there's no way that I, I will be able to stay here. Um, and I know that, uh, but survival is not my key. Um, my family survival is, but, uh, for me, it's not, but I made my peace with God a while ago on that one, but the uh, West coast, East coast, the Gulf, uh, probably anywhere, um, uh, the Miss Mississippi river, uh, I wouldn't want to be around. Anywhere uh, where they have uh, nuclear silos, nuclear bases, uh, Air Force bases, because we also have a war going on. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, you know, anything can happen. You don't want to be too close to those things. Um, and uh, I will be... Uh, uh, providing in these reports uh, what I would call safe zones. Where, where to be after the shift? What areas are going to be habitable and what areas are not going to be habitable? And uh, I think that's the reason why we're having this war as well. As uh, why, why are we having this war? Ask yourself, what's the reason why why are we having all these conflicts? One reason I could say is land. Battle for land. That's why they want. That's what, the, what, what they're battling for. It's land. And why? Especially over in Europe. They're definitely going to need land over there after the shift. There's going to be a lot of lands that are going to be underwater over there. So, and, and another thing is, why does Trump want Greenland so bad? Ask that, ask that question. Ask that question. Why does he want Greenland so bad? 
It, will Greenland not go underwater during the shift? Oh, I have. A, uh, I think Greenland will probably be on the west coast. I don't think it's going to be underwater. So what you saying it's going to shift and move? Oh yeah, there's going to be some uh, some areas that are going to be uh, be in different places. And that's based on like some tectonic movements you've been tracking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is there any movement for Greenland currently right now? And Greenland is this big battle zone because maybe it's going to be like this safe haven after a big event. Well, a lot of lands are going to, well, that may be, the ice is melting over there, as you can see. That They want to start drilling over there. They want to start drilling up in Canada now. They want to start drilling over in the Arctic right now because why? The ice is melting. Uh, that's what I, I'm going to be foreseeing here because some ice are going to be melting in some areas and an ice age is going to be growing in another parts of the world. I do think we're going to have... <laughs> You know, we, we may have an ice age probably in the next 10 to 20 years, maybe, probably in Europe somewhere. Yeah, it said 2.0 coming, uh, Europe ice age 2.0 coming. The new polar vortex is already coming. This winter is going to be super cold. Now we had the nuclear winter in 1816 uh, when that uh, uh, was a uh, volcano that erupted in the uh, in 1815, and that caused... In 1816, the year without a summer. And let me just search real quick. See, when you get old, you can't uh, think. You can't think things anymore. Well, I imagine you have a bunch of research in your brain. So, now, I need a new hard drive in my brain. Is what I need. <laughs> Mount uh, Tambora. Okay. Mount Tambora, Indonesia. The one that you specifically talk about for the East Coast, I have to bring that one up because that one is one you said if there's a volcano off that area that went off, the East Coast would need to be more aware about the shift of the magma movement. So they say that the waves, this, if something happened, oh, it wouldn't be such a bad tsunami, it wouldn't reach the East Coast. But East Coast have an issue with landslide uh, like tsunamis, and that could would that be a trigger point for that? It it depends. Um, it depends how bad the eruption. True. With this knowledge that we have been presented, and this opportunity is golden from God, you can't waste it. You know, every breath, every second matters, and. That's why I felt that this was an important interview to do. I felt this was aligned with purpose, not just intent. You know, absolutely. You know, uh, I had to come out here and speak. Uh, I had to. It, it uh, was my duty to come out here. I refuse if there's a disaster coming, and I feel something is something is about to happen. I'm going to come out and say something. No matter how you feel in these disastrous times. We have community here. We're bringing back love, community preparedness. None of us is going through this alone because you are the one who can help people with the knowledge and video proof that you have. And that's why I'm investigating every last one of your comments from the last video interview to make sure I know exactly what's going on with you. I appreciate every last one of you from the bottom of my heart. I couldn't have done this without all the new people tuning in and the people who've been here forever. Part three interview coming soon. But how you gonna get this far and not even see this? This was part one interview. It is heavily deep. Do not let them hide it from you.